Hello future engineers and welcome to a video tutorial to Onshape Practice 3 Part 2 Cliffhanger. So we are going to be modeling this part into Onshape. So what I am going to start with is actually creating this base square over here. There's a lot of different ways that we can go about designing this, but I think one of the most fun ways, maybe not the most efficient way, is to make this square over here and then we're going to do an extrusion up and down of this C bracket. So we're going to learn two different things. Uh, first and foremost though, this part is a metric part. So we're going to have to set up some things different inside of our document. So if I go over to my on shape, I am going to set up this document to be metric. So how I do that is I go over to the side over here. We've got our three dots. We hit units and then we want to change. Its default is set to inch, but we want to change to millimeter. Millimeter is what we use for our metric measurements. And once we have got that started, we can set up our drawing. So I'm going to start by using my two dimensional sketching tools on this top face. I will view normal to plane and I'm going to create a rectangle over here. Now the dimensions for this rectangle was that it had a depth over on the side view of 50 and then a width this direction. This was 56. All right. So let's take a look at how high we want to extrude this up. So we just created this rectangle over here, including this bottom part of the C that goes from here to here, 56, and this wide, 50. So we want to extrude this up 12, 12. So let's go back over there and go to Let's View. And I'll finish that sketch right here. I'm gonna view isometric and turn off all these planes so it's nice and easy to see. So now I'll hit my extrude tool I'll choose that face and I want to extrude to a standard depth of 12. And there we go. Cool. So the next part that I'm going to draw, I am going to draw the C, but I'm actually going to draw it on this face right there, the highlighted face over there. So if I go back to my Google, I'm going to draw this C shape. So there is going to be some overlap on top. And also we're going to need to extrude both up and down and I'll show you how we can do that inside of on shape so that C shape is 12 thickness all the way around so let's add that to our drawing over here uh, do, do, do. so I've selected the face I'll choose sketch I'm gonna view normal to sketch plane all right so now I'm gonna draw a rectangle and I'm gonna draw this rectangle just kind of anywhere outside of here and we're gonna use constraints to kind of match it up in a little bit so I'll draw that right here. Now the first constraint is actually, or the first thing that I wanna do is dimension this. One of the dimensions we already know, we used it earlier. Uh, we can dimension or we can use our equal constraint and say that our width is equal to 50. So I could throw my dimension in and say 50 or what I could do is I can highlight this line and this line and using my equal constraint, say that they are equal. The next thing that I want to do is add some coincident constraints to line them up where they need to be. So I'll say that those two lines or those two edges will have a coincident. And now those are lined up and it lines up the top and bottom because our width is already set. Now, one of the major dimensions that we have here, which is our overall width is 100. It defines the edge over here to the other edge all the way down on the other end. So we wanna throw in that dimension because it is touching this edge and this edge. So we'll go back to on shape. I'm gonna throw in my dimension from here to there. That is a dimension of 100. Cool. So it did shorten this line over here, this blue line, but we want that to have a little bit of overlap. So how we are going to do that, do, 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 let me view normal. We're gonna throw in another dimension. And this time that dimension 
is going to be, uh, we have a redundant dimension over here. We already have that edge dimensioned. We just want a dimension of 12. This distance is a dimension of 12, which is the difference between 56 and 44 over here. So we'll go back to this and we'll dimension from there to there. That's gonna be a dimension of 12. And there we go. Cool, so now we have the external part of our C, but we wanna cut out the inside. And because we have a standard thickness saying that it is 12 wide here, 12 wide here, and 12 wide here, we can use a really, really good tool. That tool is called trim. Nope, offset. <laughs> we are going to offset this line, this line, and this line inward to make that C shape. So when I go inside of my sketching tools, I will choose down over here, offset. Offset, we wanna choose a direction where we're going, and it doesn't matter what depth we put that offset to yet because we have to click outside of it, and then it's gonna ask what we wanna set it to. Now we have that C shape, and we can see everything is black except for those two dots at the end because we need to get rid of those two dots, and we're gonna use another new tool to get rid of that. When we have an extra line, what we can use is our trim tool. So I'm gonna go into my commands and I'm gonna choose trim. It looks like scissors and uh, when I select that, if I hover over the line that I wanna remove, it will display what is going to be trimmed or deleted. So I want to delete this internal part of the C, click that, bada bing, bada boom. We now have that C structure, it's drawn on top of this face though. So we want it to extrude up 32 and down 12, giving us a total of 44, which is our overall height. So I will hit my check mark over here. And now I want to choose my extrude tool and I'm gonna choose sketch two. And now you can see that uh, inside of our extrude options, I am going to first extrude upwards a distance of 32. And then down over here, we have a second end position. So I'm gonna turn second end position on, and that depth I can change here to be 12. And now when I hit my check mark, I have that C shape plus my flat plateau over there. So that process, once again, when we extruded, we wanted to have a second endpoint on. That allows us to extrude up and down, or left and right, in and out. It gives us extrusions in both directions. Cool. Now the only thing that we have left is to add a circle. So if I go into this, let's figure out, we have a 25 diameter circle that occurs 20 spots in this way and 25 spots in this way. So I'm gonna draw that on my screen. So let's go back over here. I'll start a sketch on this plane and we want to sketch, view normal, view normal, thank you. I just like to have it oriented like this. And I'm gonna take my center point circle, place it right there, and drag that circle out. Now using my dimension tool, I will just dimension the circle at a diameter of 25. And now I want to place my dimensions. So from here to here, this was a dimension of 20. And then from here to one of the edges, was a dimension of 25. Gosh, I was close to placing it. Cool. So now that that's fully constrained, all the lines are black, I'll hit my check mark. I'm gonna view isometric, and I am going to extrude my sketch three, and I want the result to be remove. And with it removed, I can hit my check mark, and there we go. That's how we create cliffhanger. So. I want to show you the properties. So you should have gotten a volume of 
0.511 millimeters, and then a surface area of 21,256.73 millimeters squared. So I hope that you enjoyed watching this tutorial. There was some new stuff inside of this part. So if you have any questions, please reach out. And as always, have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon.